So um, yeah, gonna do another one. Uh, this one will be a a crate pickup. So imagine a milk crate, and it's a very heavy object. Uh, who knows what the heck's in this thing? And I'm um, gonna have a person lift the thing up. So, um, as always, set the table. So I'm gonna uh, should I do this one in 3D? No, I'm going to do it in 2D just because it's going to show the masses uh, a lot a lot more uh, clearly and uh, it'll be less confusing for people. So um, yeah, let's do it from the side view and, uh, and just begin, begin dealing with showing how this is like um, you're dealing with something that is a collection of ligatures, I guess, or um, ligatures. It's it's it, you know it's a person who's got all these joints right all these um, you know it's that's the thing is, is that when you're dealing with a person treat them like a puppet um, they consist of all these joint they're a jointed model so you know it's a simulation uh, it's kind of like a ragdoll simulation so anyway uh, let's just, let's just get to it um, I've got the crate on the ground I would eventually like this person to pick up the crate and maybe get it positioned on their belt and then they can walk with it. So uh, I'll draw the crate on the ground, and um, I'm just thinking, okay, I can imagine that one of the key frames is going to be right here with the knee, like right right there up against the crate. Okay. And um, good. And I guess what else is important? Okay, so I'll have them hunch over. Okay, I know this much, is that when they hook their hand in there, they're eventually going to have to haul back on the thing. Whenever you haul back on something, it causes your arms, whenever you're you're lifting something very heavy, it causes your arms to straighten out. So I'm drawing straight arms because I know that is you know, this is what's going, this is one of you know, one of those, those frames. You know what? I'm not even going to bother drawing the head. Um, it's no need because the head is not exerting any of the forces. We'll need it for the balance later, but um, you know, you can do this. You don't have to start every animation at the very beginning. Find that very important, you know, point of contact and and use, you know, draw that uh, instead. Right? Animation is this fl you're dealing with a flow of time. So you can be you can start at the end of that flow of time or you can be in the middle or you can be at the beginning or you can be even before that or or way after the aftermath. Whichever, whichever frame, whichever segment or data point on that flow of time that you see uh, first, you know, and, and most clearly, do that. Do that. So, all right. So anyway, here's what I imagine that he's going to bend. I'm going to keep these legs here in the same spot. Um, he's going to have to get that, that crate up. So I imagine I'm going to bend that backwards and... Um, I guess the um yeah let's see. I I imagine this crate's gonna come up right and that seems to be about right right so he's lifted it up now he's got it against his his body and um and I think at this point let's throw in another frame. Okay. All right. I need to make it so that those feet on the next frame, those feet they have they have to um let's draw the toe. Yeah. I'm going to curl the toes down. Because what he what this person needs to do is they need to get that mass, right? You've got a center of gravity. This is the this is the pivot point right there. They've got to get as much of that mass on the other side so they can begin to toppling backwards. So the person is going to lean back, way back. It's a really heavy mass. Right? So I'm showing how to right, how to control that mass, how to perform exertions on mass to move the masses around. So yeah, the person is really hauling back on this crate. And yeah, maybe their head, you know, let's let's put the head in now. Gonna crank that head backwards, sure, why not, right? So and then another frame. 
Okay, so now I can imagine that maybe they're, they'll they'll begin to topple backwards. Which this is this what we want? This is good. So the leg begins to come up. Good. Okay, and when that happens, right? I can make it so that this this hand pulls upwards this way. So if that's the direction, the upward direction of the box, then there we are. The box comes up. Like that. All right, so now you can imagine that this this corner here trades to that that position. All right, so the whole box is kind of rolling now. So the way or the the way to achieve the illusion of something being really heavy is to show exertion and to show um, physical manipul like to show this kind of physical manipulation this this exploitation of leverage um and and just you'll see how he's trying to get himself under the box as much as possible right there's this kind of uh, manipulation of the masses and the balances and now like you get this really heavy looking box and then i think here between here and here i want to throw in one more in between so okay I'm gonna I imagine the flow feels Yeah, that feels about right. So scooping, that's this kind of a scooping motion. Right, so look at that. Right, see how it's how fluid that scoop up is. Right, that's what you need to capture um, when you're dealing with you know the exertion of force on a on a heavy mass. So the manipulation of that mass, it's it's efficient manipulation on that mass. Okay, and now and now that it's here, look, it's at the belt. It's perfectly at the belt line. I could probably draw one leg um, here slightly, like down as well. So he only goes up on one knee, perhaps. And then from that, I can now let's right, get the flow. And begin. Yeah, begin un uncoiling that leg. And same with the other one. I can, there we are, We're going up, straighten out the neck, and then another frame, once again establish the flow. And maybe I'm gonna let I'm gonna let this foot slide back so I draw these little poofs of dust being kicked up as he slides the foot back. Good. Okay, so maybe a little bit of problems um, maintaining the size of things. Things are getting larger and smaller. Um, yeah, that's definitely getting way too big. Just going to shrink that down until it looks about right. In fact, you know, I think what I'll do is just prior to him standing up, I'm going to move, um, I'm going to throw in one more in between where he, um, let's keep the box in the same, basically everything's going to stay the same except I'm going to move his arm under the box like that. Great. So 
everything else stays practically, you know, the same there. And now when he goes up, I can knock back these, um, knock that back much better. Knock that one back. Yeah. And also it looks like the box is, has shifted. It's gone, it's gone walkabout. It's fixed now. Okay. And then, you know, probably one more frame for the uh, final kind of standing. So that leg goes straight. Uh, this other leg here, slide that completely. Maybe that leg, uh, I'm going to just make a slight adjustment. Went back too far. Now it's a very stable configuration, what we have. I can't see that. Yeah, it bothers me when I'm drawing off frame like that, but whatever. But you can see, right, That's that reaches a stable configuration. And it's the funny thing is that, like, if I, if I play it, like forward, it looks like that. If I reverse it, it um, it's a reversible animation. It's a reversible state. Not all, not it's, you're not always going to wind up re with reversible animations like this, but uh, this one just happened to work out that way, right? But I mean, you can really just feel the weight of that box. That's all there is to it.